Hey, what's up team? This is Eddie Gray. In this installment, we're going to check out Softube's DSM MK3. Now, if you don't know that plugin, it's a $600 plugin. So the question is, is it worth it or is it not? We are about to find out. Let's go. All right. Hey, what's up, team? Eddie Gray here. Uh, I've got Robert on the chat. What's up, bro? Hey, man. How you doing? Uh, we're all good. Uh, so Robert's a, a good buddy of mine. We work together. He's been helping me uh, with HF Tracks and HF Academy. And, you know, we're here today to talk about the the uh, Softube plugin. It's called the DSM MK3, right? Yep. Yeah, so this is kind of like, you know, the diamond, the platinum plugin in the music production world and I thought you know what let's go ahead and create a video just to see if the specs are the real deal if it translates do you know anything about the plugin yeah so like skimming through on softube I saw that it's an emulation of of a kind of like legendary mastering limiter okay I say that it's a, a line by line code port of the legendary Weiss DS1 MK3 mastering processor Oh, dude, that sounds insane. Yeah, well, one, sounds one of the best fancy. things about it, too, when you get it, is they um, they give you a maximizer and a de -esser. Right. So, you know, it's, it's nice to have uh, a little bit of both. As you already know, like sometimes, you know, just having one limiter isn't enough. And sometimes using multiple stages of compression, you know, limiting is the same thing. Right. And when you limit, oftentimes you'll hear that like high-end kind of thing you usually have to add a ds or anyway in some form so it's kind of cool to have that right in all in one package yeah they definitely thought it thought it through man well here look at these these tests that i ran and, and we're going to do another one live on the spot but i've got two songs here okay the first one says test that's the one that i ran the mk3 to so we'll, we'll study the numbers but then let's look at the one in the bottom and this one is the full version which is just kind of like regular. So the numbers are, you know, pretty much comparable. Uh, there's not that much of a difference in terms of the loudness. And like the number here on the far left is the integrated loudness. So, you know, negative 12 is pretty normal. Like if I, if I AB these, you're not going to hear that much of a difference. But, right. but listen for the richness of the tone. So it's not that it's going to sound like 5 dB louder, but just like, Listen to how it processes as compared to, you know, let's say like a stock limiter. Check it out. Same part. Hold on. Now, I just want to be clear. This is not an illusion. I rendered these with two separate limiters. And while the numbers are the same, the integrated loudness on the far left, negative 12.9 is not that different than negative 13.9. There's only one, you know, LUFS or, or DBS. So how is it that a song can sound so drastically different? I mean, you hear the, the, the difference. And before you, you, you tell me your opinion, this guy is about to graduate in a week or two from a very prestigious college. And so I absolutely trust his judgment. And I got mad respect from that's why he works with me and for me. So what's up, man? What do you think? Like, what what is happening here? What I hear mostly in the in the first one, in the one with the with the limiter with the soft tube on it, I uh, I, I just hear it being a lot richer. Mm. Uh, in listening for for differences and stuff like this, I usually pay attention to the way the low end responds, and I just really like the way the low end feels in that compared to the other limiter. Let, let's check the low end. Uh, good point. Good point. Yeah. See, this is why we brought him on. He knows his stuff. Let's check it out. Well played, fine sir. Let me go to a part that's a little bit louder and see if you have any, just any thoughts on on um, this 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 song never gets epic per se, but there, but it gets a little bit louder. Check it out. Same part down here.
Yeah, man. I mean, it is so subtle. It is really subtle, but I honestly feel so much more power in the low end from the from the from the Mark III, comparing it to the other limiter. So that's one example, yeah. right? I, let's hear something with drums because it's a yeah. better, you know, uh, example of something you know that we're really going to use kind of um, on a regular basis. So this yeah. next song called "Dueling Hearts," right? Uh, version two up here was just the standard adaptive limiter stock, and then here we're using the uh the mk3 again now now this is when it actually um, started showing me its magic because if you look at the second number what we call the decibel true peak right this has to do mm -hmm. with with translation so you know we're listening to this in my studio it sounds pretty good maybe i just have some basic rocket speakers but then we go to like your studio or somebody else's studio and they got like four or five thousand dollar plus uh speakers each one <laughs> right individually five and five <laughs> that it's not going to translate the same and we're going to experience, you know, negative distortion. You're going to get clipping, but not in a good way, not intentional. And so right. you can see just by using the plugin, the integrated loudness was exactly the same, more or less, but the decibel true peak was down in the range where it needs to be. Now, every single song should be anywhere between zero and negative two, ideally negative 0.75 negative two if you hit that mark as your decibel true peak then you're you're doing really good now of course if i drag in a song by like the foo fighters or flume or something it's you know they're gonna clip they're using digital distortion digital clippers but yeah i just find it fascinating that this plugin although it's hitting the same marks more or less um it, it just you know it just sounds better I was going to say one thing about how when you drag in a Foo Fighters track, it's mm. so much louder. I mean, that's the reason we actually aim for lower numbers. Why we aim for negative 0.75, negative 2, because mm. when it gets converted to an MP3, that decoding causes like, you know, it causes the loudness to go up. It causes our peaks to go up, all that compression and stuff like that. So aiming for those numbers and getting it to sound that loud is always the goal. Do you know how much it goes up? Is there, are there like algorithms formulas i don't remember the exact numbers i want to say it's something like it, it could it could be anywhere from like a db to 3 db i think roger that so wow that'd be pretty dramatic Jeez. Yeah. well here real quick let's let's uh check out this thing in action we'll we'll look at it we'll hear it and this is on a different song that has like some snares and stuff um and then we'll go from there uh, yeah. maybe I'll, I'll i'll pop in a couple different limiters and then we'll go ahead and, and, and look at the numbers, okay? So here we have a song. I'm using the L2, which is a very capable limiter, super top notch. We're going to see how does it do next to the DSM MK3. Mm -hmm. All right, so right here, I've got the L2 on the right-hand side, and then I've got the MK3. It looks really pretty, huh, on the left-hand side? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and play the song. The MK3 is going to be bypassed. And we're just going to look at the numbers here with our multimeter. And you can use, you know, any meter you want. I like the WLM by Waves. I also like anything by Mastering the Mix. But let's just use this for now. And um, we'll go ahead and play this guy and we'll compare the two. Here we go. Okay, so we're talking no snare, no climax, and our RMS is at negative, let's call it 13, all right? So let me get rid of this guy. Let me put on a good, good old faithful preset. I'll just start with mid and see how that works. All right, let's see. <laughs> That just sounds so much richer. Let me go on yeah. the soft, see what this sounds like. But it, it's like it goes through this like network of like harmonics or something and it it's comes the circuitry. out. It's the emulation of the circuitry. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, like, I'm glad that you use uh, something like pro, like the fat filter because it's in the same like range and like it's very highly regarded. It's a great limiter. 
Mm. But I think the the main thing about that that um, DS1 is that you know you're you're emulating what that circuitry does, and that just makes that can make all the difference, honestly. Jeez, Hold, dude, let me a b this one more time. Hold on. Dude, I'm sorry. Yeah. That is that is it's not even in the same world. I love the L2. I'm a big fan. I've used it for most of my career. It's yeah. given me a lot of W's. But bro, bro, that yeah, oh, geez. you know what I'm hearing? It here it sounds like one of those things where you don't have to work as hard to get to get that sound. You know what I'm saying? Like with the L3, you have I mean, sorry, the L2, you have that you yep. have that plugin, but then you got to have you know whatever saturation and tape on top of that. With this, I feel like you could be reducing that. You know, you could be like, oh, okay, that already has that richness. That already has that vibe that I want. You know, bro. Yeah, the, the, with the L two, you have to work it. There's no question. You gotta kind of play with the release, try the different styles. You know how they give you like dynamic, you know, all around. Right. And and I love the plugin. Like I, I'm still gonna use it. Nothing's changed. Definitely. It's just that this boy right here, this guy. Is just on a whole different level. It can be perfect for for situations where you don't need the clean limit, where you want it to be mm. a little dirty, you know. Oh, get that nice healthy distortion. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm I'm blown away by how loud he can get and still pull off a good decibel true peak. There's a part with drums right here. I really want to hear this. So we're going back to L2, Robert. Here we go. <laughs> Still, still, what do you think there? Yeah, I mean, like, when I hear that, I just think, like, that sounds more real. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, there's just <laughs> something about it that sounds more finished and, and, and pro about it. it I mean, that's still not a lot knock on the pro, on the, on the fab filter. I mean, that's an industry standard, too. I'm just saying, like, there's already so much vibe packed in one plug-in. It's just, it's cool. It's really cool. Roger that. Dude, let's, let's render the L2 real quick, and let's see the numbers. I'm just curious to look at the actual. All right, man, let's look at the final numbers. And I know we're just working presets here, but just out of the box, let's see what is happening. L2 is coming in strong at negative 12 integrated loudness. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. Look at this. Didn't I tell you? The, the loudness is it's actually a little louder, which is better, uh, especially right. with a song like this. But the decibel true peak, man, the way it processes the signal is so much cleaner. Again, you're supposed yeah. to be between negative 0.75 to negative 2, and that's just a generality. But look, it is receiving the information and processing much better. And then when we yeah. look at the dynamic range, we're right on the money. Everything's the same. Let's go ahead and listen to both. The one in the top is the L2. Let me go ahead and just chop off some of these so that we're not confused. The one at the very top is the L2. This is the MK3. To your point, that low end, bro. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Yeah. Let me go into this soft section here, and then we're going to ride into the last part of the song. Okay, let's go to this buildup. that snare that's good sounding man 
Yeah, let's listen to the end here. All right, man, what do you think, man? Final thoughts, Robert. What do you think, brother? I'm, like, super impressed with it because, you know, out of the box, using a preset, it just <laughs> sounds so finished, you know? Right. Like the L2, it seems like you have to, you know, what I was noticing in the low end and the L2 is, like, there's some pumping, and I know you can adjust settings and fix that kind of stuff. But with the, with the Mark III, I was just like, oh, it's already, it already sounds so natural. It already sounds like it flows right. It, it just, I don't know. I love the sound of it. I love the, the, the analog vibe that you get from it. I love that. It's just very vibey sounding. It, it's compared to like a clean limiter. And yeah, I don't know. I, I'm a fan of it. I like it. Roger that, dude. That's awesome. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you just chilling, hanging out. Uh, I want to bring you on, you know, a lot more. Where can people find you if they want to talk to you, you know, follow you, et cetera? Absolutely. Uh, I can be followed at Rob Rod Delto at Instagram. I think that's kind of like the only place I'm at uh, <laughs> at the moment, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Yeah, fresh out of college, you know, life's busy, but I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> Very good. We'll look out a lot uh, from this guy. He's gonna definitely make his mark. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like the content, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. We appreciate you guys. We know who you are. And remember, keep your frequency high. We'll see you later.